Okay, so let's move on to now to um, lot numbers and serial numbers. So let's go into items and inventory, click on company preferences, click on advanced inventory settings, and then we're gonna move on to, let me just turn off multiple locations to make it easier. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn on serial numbers. And we'll start with serial numbers and then we'll move on to lot numbers afterwards. So some of the um, options that it gives me here is where do you want to show serial numbers? Do you want to show them on assembly? If you want to show them on, on an inventory adjustment, sales transactions, purchase transactions? It should be in all of them, really. Um, so let's go ahead and hit OK. And then we'll hit OK. OK. And then let's go ahead and receive some new inventory. So let me go into Enter Bills. OK. And I'll pick any vendor here. Okay, and let's say that I'm going to, I'm gonna select a different item here. I'll select this one. And notice it gives me a warning about serial numbers. So let me just, I'm just gonna select this one item here and I'll bring three of them. And notice that here was a serial number. Now I have to enter a serial number for each item. Okay, so I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, comma, four, five, six, seven, or that one, comma, nine, nine, eight, zero. So by putting the commas, I'm letting the system know that I'm putting uh, multiple serial numbers in there. And I'll hit save and close. And the comma would be its serial number. So when I go sell it, let's do an invoice now. I'll pick any customer here. And then I'll pick my item code. Let me just double check so I don't know which one which is the item that I picked of course I can't remember the item it's going to be an issue that one right there let me copy it and I'll put it here on the invoice perfect okay so then when I go sell when I go sell it now okay it's asking me for the serial number I have to pick a serial number however this uh, this field this um, this um, um, this form here doesn't have the serial number option uh, selected here, so I may have to fix this uh, layout. Let me just make sure that I got my serial numbers showing here. Okay, there's my serial numbers. And I'll do default layout. Okay, so my serial numbers are enabled. Hit OK. Okay, so now there we go. There's my serial numbers. So when I go sell these, let's say I'm going to sell two of them, I now have to pick from which serial numbers I'm, I'm picking from. See that? So I actually have to you know, pick which of the serial numbers that I'm selling. Okay? Um, so I have to select hand select them here as we go. Okay? And I have to select as many serial numbers as items that I'm selling. Okay, that's a really, really important piece. I'm going to hit this drop down and show you. I can click auto fill from existing, and the system will pick, uh, will pick them sort of in FIFO mode, right? It will pick the, the first two, and then you're going to have to go hand pick the ones that have the correct serial number. So those are basically your options. You can also, uh, if you have a barcode scanner, you can scan each serial number. You may have to set your barcode scanner to be able to scan numbers and then press tab right after. Um, you know, like one, two, three, four, and then tap, something like that, and then have it, you have to insert a comma, and then have it scan again, and then, you know, press tab and that sort of thing. So that's kind of the tricky part of, of trying to use barcodes for serial numbers. You kind of have to experience it. It's, it's, it's kind of tricky, but, but it is possible to also scan the serial numbers as well. Um, you can also click this button here. It's called Quick View for Serial Numbers, and you can actually also enter them through here, okay? Uh, so you can actually, let's say I'm gonna delete the serial numbers here and click on click view, and then I can actually just enter the serial numbers here if I want to. So this would actually be a much better option for scanning. And if, if a serial number is wrong, it will give you an error saying, hey, wait a second, this serial number doesn't exist. So there's definitely some alternatives uh, for working uh, the serial numbers, again, if you need to work with serial numbers, that's going to be um, a requirement of yours. You have to kind of give that some deep thought. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, save and close. And then I'm gonna go into reports 
inventory, and then I'm going to show you um, transaction list by serial number. So what's nice about this is if I happen to have a, a recall or, or something like that, that is going to ask me to research, you know, when that serial number was sold, I can actually input my serial number here, click OK, and it'll give me every single transaction when I bought it, when I sold it. So for, for warranties and stuff like that, this is great. Okay. Uh, the other report we have here is inventory, and then we'll do inventory, I mean, serial numbers in stock. And if you have any, if you happen to have, actually, I sold the two that I had, but if you happen to have any items with serial numbers in stock, they would show up in that report. Okay. And there really isn't any other reports uh, with serial numbers, but there will be with lot numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and, and swap over to lot numbers. So I'm going to go to edit preferences. Go to company preferences, click on advanced inventory settings, click on serial and lot numbers, and swap this. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and delete the transactions I had with serial numbers. That's kind of important too. Once you started with serial numbers, QuickBooks really doesn't know what to do with the historical of it. So let me go ahead and delete the, the, the couple of transactions I did with that. Because right? you normally you wouldn't be um, having that issue where you swap back and forth and go from serial number to lot number, right? I'm just doing it for this particular example. So I'm just deleting the transactions that have serial numbers involved. Perfect. Okay, that should be okay now. So I should be able to swap now from So here in the serial and lot numbers preferences and advanced preferences, I'm going to swap it from serial to lot number and same same sort of options. And then I'll hit OK, and then OK. And these are going to be slightly different. I'm going to show you how these work. So let's first receive some inventory in our lots. So I'm going to go into vendor, enter bills. I'll pick up any vendor here, and then I'll receive some product. So I'm going to receive this product here, the ceiling fixtures. Let me just make sure I copy that. So I know which one, which one I'm working on. Okay, and I'll maximize it, make it a little bit easier to read. So I'm gonna let's say I'm gonna bring in uh, based on the different lots, I'll bring in a hundred. So I'll bring in a hundred of these, and it's telling me, hey, specify a lot number. So right here was this lot number. I just give it a lot number. So we'll call it LT101, LT101-3. Okay. And then I'll bring in another set of these. So I'll bring in, let's say, 400 of these into a different lot. So LT101-4, whatever the lot number uh, numbering system that you use. And I'll hit uh, Save and Close. So if I go into Reports, Inventory, and then I click Lot Numbers in Stock, Okay, it will show me every single item that has items in stock with the respective lot numbers. And if I double click on that, I get this little window called the quick the click view or the quick view, and it tells me how many I have in each lot. Okay, I can't print this unfortunately. This is not a report. That's what I mentioned earlier. We really don't have a report like this, but you can see how much you have in each lot. I'm gonna go to reports, inventory, and then we also have transaction list by lot number. So if I pick my item, same case that we have on the on the serial numbers. In this particular case, I don't don't have to type the serial number. I can just I mean, or the lot number. I can select it from here and then hit OK. I get my entire history when I bought it, when I sold it. Okay. Then when I go sell anything with a lot number, so let me do an invoice here. I'll pick a customer and then I'll pick an item. When I hit my drop number. Uh, drop down, it tells me you have a hundred and, and lot 1013 and 400 and 1014. And if I wanted to sell sell all for this lot, so let's say I'm going to sell all hundred for these, and then I'll try to use the same item, and then I'll sell, let's say I'll try to sell 500 for one lot, it tells me that I can't. So it actually does, does warn me that I don't have enough to sell for a particular lot. So I, you, I do get that warning. Um, however, obviously, we have to have that feature that um, avoids negative inventory for me to uh, push through and sell more than what I have in stock. So that's the good thing about 
this, it will let, let you know exactly how many you have in each slot, so you know exactly how much you can sell in each one. Okay, I'm gonna show you something else. I'm gonna take this 400 out and then click save. And then I'm in the same transaction. Once I hit my drop down here, notice that my first lot is not uh, there anymore. You actually have to save it if you want QuickBooks to recalculate your availability per lot. So right now it says uh, 400. Even if I type 400 here, it still says I have 400, right? So I would have to save it for me to then hit the drop down and notice I have no more in stock. So yeah, it does have to ultimately save for it to um, for it to apply. Okay, so I'll hit save and close. And that is a uh, lot numbers in a nutshell.